ESPN. So if you are with us, typically, typically we do these live. We've started doing them pre-recorded because YouTube rewards pre-recorded content versus rewarding live. So that's why we've changed our format a little bit here, you guys. With that, it's the same exact thing that we've always done. So what I would like you to do when you watch this video, please feel free to comment, come right along with me. I will come back and I'll answer any questions, but please put your input in. Um, we are going to preview this weekend shows. There's three shows for this weekend that we're going to go into. So um, once we go into them and start talking about the competitors in them, things like that, feel free to comment your thoughts uh, as well as tell me if I missed anybody that's on the list because sometimes I do. Um, I go through and I pull names that I know have uh, either qualified for the Olympia or our top fives, that kind of thing. So it's very common that I may miss somebody in my in my previews. So please shout them out in the comments um, so that we can pay attention to them when they actually get on stage this weekend or in weekends to come. Also, if you want to come work with me, I do hair and makeup, suits, and posing. That's what I do, seanscouturecuties.com. This QR code that I have right here is for our cutie boutique. So if you need any of those things, you can get them right here. I wanted to kind of explain this too, because this is brand new for us. What we used to always do is we used to do suit consultations um, to purchase suits. We still do those. However, if you would like to get a suit and then have us customize it for you, you can do that right through the cutie boutique. When you purchase a suit through the cutie boutique, it's not a done deal. Once you purchase, come in, talk to me. We can customize things for you, make it exactly how you want it to be. But the cool thing about the Cutie Boutique, though, is that if you order one of those suits just as is, I can have them done in like two weeks. So that's a pretty quick turnaround time for those of you that have been in the sport for a little while. You know that. So that's why we created this new platform so that we can pretty much service all your needs, whether it's fully customized or if you need something really fast too, we can get it done. Um, so yeah, check it out. All that stuff's on there. All of our packages are on there, everything. So we would love to work with you in that regard. Also, let me grab another QR code for you guys. This is for Cuties Conquering the Stage 2024. For those of you that are new here, this is something I've been doing. This is our ninth year and we invite some of the top pros and coaches in our industry to come and teach you at a event here in the DC area in January. It's a great way to kick off the year. It's an all female only event and it's not just a typical posing seminar. We go through everything. We go through your mental capacity. We go through budgeting for shows. We go through coaching expectations. You get to get on stage and actually be judged on your presentation aspects. You can win sponsorships. Every girl that walks in there walks out with a swag bag that is worth more than the ticket cost itself. <laughs> so we're talking about warm ups, posing suits, actual bags that you can take for your gym bag. And it has a little compartment at the bottom for your food carrying. I mean, something that you would spend hundreds of dollars on you get just for coming. Um, our sponsors all give amazing gifts and prizes and things like that. As we go, um, if you check out this QR code that we have in the corner here, you'll see who our speakers are for this year, what their topics are. You'll also see all of our sponsors listed. So you'll get an idea of who you're going to actually get a chance to speak with and all that stuff when you're at the, at the event itself. This is a little different from a normal show because you have the whole weekend to really absorb everything and learn and use it as you go forward in your competitive season. Uh, if you have any questions about QD's Conquering the Stage and you're thinking about coming, reach out. That's what we're here for, all right? So let's get into tonight's preview. We do have three shows this weekend, so we're gonna go through each one of them, um, starting with Mexico. So let me pull up, pull up the Mexico show here real fast because we have a lot of shows that are outside of the US now, right? So this is the Sheru Classic. Um, they have both men's physique and bikini. So there's not a huge list here. I'm not familiar with a lot of these girls in this list. Like some of the names look kind of familiar to me. Uh, so I just pulled out two that I think we should be paying attention to really. First one on that list is Marioli. So Marioli has been doing well this year. She just competed at Sasquatch. Uh, at Sasquatch, she did place. she placed 11th or I'm sorry, 12th, um, but she's been top five throughout the year. Sasquatch was a very large show. It was a very difficult show. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't even remember kind of seeing her on stage, which tells you a little bit. I think, I think maybe she just needed to 
I don't know, fix, I don't, she I just kind of blended in. <laughs> so um, looking at her front pose, I think she looks pretty decent here. I don't know if this is fully set up or not, but if it is, if it is, she needs to drop her arm a little bit just so she can round that shoulder out. Um, what I've critiqued her on in the past, this past year is that her lower body has been a little overpowering in comparison to her upper body, um, which still looks like that's the case here. It's just a matter of making sure that she gets filled out in the shoulder to kind of match this lower body. Um, let's take a look at her back shot. Now we don't have a full back shot. Um, oh, and I just realized I didn't share that screen with you. So let me, let me do that now. That would be helpful. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Here's her back shot. Um, again, we don't have a full back shot here, so I can't really give you a lot of critiques here. All I can see by looking at this close up is the the need for an upper body here. Um, let me let me flip over and get that um, get that front shot up for you too, because I just realized I wasn't actually screen sharing it. I was looking at it on my side. There we go. Okay, so this was the front shot I was talking about, and how she needs to drop this arm down a little bit. So that her shoulder will round out a little. She definitely looks like she has more size in her lower half than her upper. So that's where I would focus the, the attention right here. Um, and then probably do a bigger suit top. She looks like she's popping out of the suit top. So that's that's a that's always a, a, a risky thing right there. So just be careful about that with your suits, you guys. Um, the other girl that I pulled up for this show is Roxana who, again, she just competed this past weekend, but she did not place. Now, I do remember looking at her because I was looking for her um, at that show because she is already Olympia qualified, I believe. She's already won a show this year. Um, <clears throat> I was not a fan of the pink suit on her. Um, looking at her, maybe she, hasn't, maybe she hasn't won a show this year. I thought she did. She's already been to the Olympia, so there's that. She's Olympia qualified. Um in the past, I just don't know about this year for sure, because it's not on her list here for her, her um, qualifications this year. Anyway, pink suit just blended with her. It did not pop off her skin tone well at all. But even with that, she just wasn't conditioned enough. Um, from the back, she looked quite soft. Overall, this this isn't a bad front pose at all. She's just not she's just not conditioned enough. That's all. She just missed the mark on the on the conditioning. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't know if she can actually get that conditioning right in a week, um, unless maybe she maybe she had some inflammation or something like that that was that was hindering her. But to me, this looks like she's still you know, a good three four weeks out from her show. Right? This just doesn't look like she's tight enough. So. A um, couple of the presentation things. I mean, her hair is hitting the top of her glutes. That's never a good thing. You guys know this. So she needs to cut that, um, fix this. It's really not clean up here at the top. So maybe just um, either cut the hair or curl it or something to make it look a little bit more polished there. But I would scrap the pink suit for sure. The pink suit did not do anything for her. Um, and then when you're looking at this pose too, just look at how wonky her arms are here. She needs to fix that. So um this is the arm that she uses to pull around in the front pose. So I'm assuming that's why that one's down more and this one's out more, um, just the way that she's imbalanced here. So there's a lot of little things here that are keeping her from a top placing. And even though she is a previous Olympia qualified athlete, that doesn't mean anything nowadays. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we'll see. We'll see what happens at this show. Um, I don't feel like anybody's really like a huge standout going to win this show unless somebody decides to jump in last minute. Again, I could be missing somebody here. Um, some of these names look relatively familiar, but I can't place them in my head. So if I miss somebody here, please type it into the comments. Let me know. Um, that'll take a look at them. So I'm paying attention to the results for this coming weekend. All right. So that's Mexico, the Sheru classic. Um, let's move over to Europa next. So this is the, the Europa show in Spain. Um, this is going to be actually a really tough show. Now, these Euro European shows used to be like you could jump in and if you looked halfway decent, you would place, right? That's not the case anymore. These shows are getting more and more difficult, more and more competitive. Um, and it's the same girls going in over and over and over too. So just because, um, you jump into the show doesn't necessarily mean you're going to, you're going to win it. 
right? Specifically, if you're jumping in from the US. <laughs> so uh, that used to be the case. Girls used to go over to, to Europe to try to win a show because they were here in the US and it was harder here. So it was easier to win a show over in, the, in Europe. That's not the case anymore. So looking at the, at the list right here, right off the bat, we're looking at Christina Brunauer. So I've talked about her several times. I think she has a phenomenal frame and look. She's just not posing it right. And every time that she goes into these shows, this pose is just off. And we just talked about her in the wrap up from this past weekend in Italy. In Italy, So um, I felt like from the back, she was a little off. From the front, she looks pretty good, um, except for her pose. This pose is just so off. If she could just sit back into that hip, I mean, it would be so much better. And I know this looks like she's kind of transitioning. You know, it, it she kind of is, you know, so there's still when she's actually set in the pose, it's not, it's not fully there. So, um, I wish that whoever was coaching her would tell her to fix this pose because she would be a completely different competitor if she did. I actually think, like I said last time, I think that she could have won a show by now if she just fixes this pose, um, from the back, same thing. I mean, she's just a little off on her pose from the back. Um, we, again, we just talked about this and just wrapped this up the other day, so I'm not going to go too deep in detail, but the suit cut from the back wasn't great, didn't flatter her. And then, um, you know, the pose is just a little off here, just a little. It's not bad. Her front pose is off by a lot more, but the, the back pose isn't isn't terrible. She's tilted a little bit. She's got a little bit of imbalance here. Um, needs to make sure she gets the hair off her shoulders, that kind of thing. Uh, just some little things. If she stood up a little taller, I think she's bent a little too much in the knees, Stuff like that. You know, there's just little tiny tweaks here that just playing with us a little bit could make it a whole lot better for her. Maybe, maybe she'll get the memo here and she'll actually change these poses because if she could, man, she'd be so good. She'd be so good. Oh, it's frustrating when I see stuff like that because I see the potential. It's right there in front of her. Um, Valeria Val, Valeria, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I always screw it up. So again, we just talked about her this past week. Um, she placed fourth in Italy, which for her is a very low placing, especially in Europe. Um, she tends to win these European shows, but there's a lot of presentation details that are off here. Um, the jewelry is really distracting. This is a lot of bangles. Get rid of those bangles, man. Um, I'm not a fan of the suit. I've mentioned that before. Her tan is way too dark. Like I said, you can actually see where it's rubbing off here a little bit. It's not seeping into the skin as much. Her conditioning is too hard, you know, and a lot of these things are just simple, like day of show mistakes, right? Um, she is posing a little bit too big through the upper body too. She needs to relax and just let this hang. Again, we've talked about this with bikini. They're looking for the S curve, not the X curve. So make it an S, not an X. This is clearly an X. I mean, clearly, clearly an X, right? Need to soften it up. That's all. Um, she's a beautiful girl. She's got beautiful structure. She's just not nailing it on these little details, right? Which is again, frustrating because I feel like she could be much, much better than she actually is. Um, now where she does need to improve her physique is she does need to put on some, some general size because, um, her shoulders for her frame are a little bit small. She is five foot 11, I think. So you got to remember that she's got a lot of frame to fill out. And from the back, when we look at the back shot, she needs more glutes. I mean, when you look at this, it's not terrible when we look at this, but when you see her next to other people, you see that her legs overpower her glutes. She needs more glutes. Just, just needs to fill these out some more. They look great. They're just small for her frame. On anybody else's frame, they'd be fine. <laughs> but, you know, she's 5'11", so she's got to get a little bit bigger just so that they, they are in balance with the rest of her shape. Um, again, change the suit out. It blends completely in with her tan. Like you don't even see the difference, right? Need some pop of color there. Little things, these little details. She's still not Olympia qualified yet, which, you know, she coming into this, everybody thought she was going to be a potential um, dark horse at the Olympia this past year. And now she's done like five or six shows this year and she's not qualified yet. So, you know, that's how quickly stuff like this can catch up to you, right? So looking at her show history, right? We're looking at Pittsburgh, New York, Nevada, and Italy. So she's done four shows. This is her fifth show going into it this, this, this weekend. And she's still not qualified after winning every show she did last year. Right. 
Just got to get to the criteria. Got to get to the criteria, you guys. Um, Nora Mahonen, uh, she is an ex-Olympian as well. She's not qualified. The last time, few times she's been on stage have been a little off. Um, specifically, this this particular show, we didn't even talk about her because she didn't place in the top five, um, which she typically does. Beautiful girl, but her conditioning is really off. Um, I'm not going to say too much about her tan because I don't know. This could just be the lighting of the show, but she's really soft here. This is really soft through the waistline and all of that, um, which I'm assuming they tried to do that because I think she's come in too conditioned before that kind of thing. But she's just she just didn't she just didn't hit the mark here. Um, she's another one that for a couple of years we all thought could be really really good. She kind of looks a little bit like Janet Leung, so she I you know I said she could be the next coming of Janet. Um, but she needs to fill her glutes out. That's the other thing too. So that could be one of the reasons why her conditioning was off at this show. Um, she was probably trying to fill her glutes out and in the process, you know, probably lost the waistline, that kind of thing. But you can see she has no depth to her glutes here. It's just kind of flat. Now she's got the, the diamond drops in here. So the conditioning in the, in the hamstrings is fine. It's actually too much in the hamstrings, but the waistline suffers. So, you know, that's what happens when you just don't have enough muscle there. There's only so much you can fill out if you don't have the muscle to fill out. Right. And it ends up, it has to go somewhere. If you start eating a ton of carbs, it has to go somewhere. It's going to go to your waistline. Right. So it's been a little while since she's been on stage. I think, let's see, when was this show? August. So it's been about a month since she's been on stage. That's enough time to fix some conditioning issues, not enough time to grow. So I'm curious to see if she looks any better coming into the show, but I'm guessing she's probably going to be about the same, maybe fixing the waistline a little bit, that kind of thing. But we'll see. Um, where she really needs to improve, like I said, is that depth in the glutes. She needs some more, she needs some more density and some more fullness and roundness in the glutes. So next is Octavia. So Octavia has already won a show. She is Olympia qualified. She was second in Italy this past weekend. We just talked about her on our last wrap up and she's actually got a really, really great shape and frame. She's done a very good job of streamlining her physique. I would say she was quite blocky in previous years. I don't feel like that's the case anymore. Where she's got to be careful is her conditioning. She's got some graininess here in the quads. Um, and I think this is probably just due to the fact that she has been trying to streamline her physique from what I've seen. So in the process of doing that, a lot of times you end up getting really lean and hard. So you got to be careful with that. Um, you know, we got some vascularity going on up here. That's a really hard looking arm um, and, and shoulder here. So you've got to be careful with those kinds of things. It starts looking more like, you know, figure bodybuilding, that kind of thing versus bikini here uh, with the muscle development. So it needs to soften up just a touch, but keep the waistline just as tight. Waistline looks great. Everything else, she just needs to soften up. So keep the waistline where it is. That's really hard to do. I know it's easy to say, but it's really hard to do. Um, I know right now she's just probably trying to nail her look for the Olympia so that she can go into the Olympia on a good note and make sure that she's going to do well when she gets to the Olympia. Um, and again, she was, she was second here. So it's not like she was way off, but there's just not a, a lot of little things that she could do a little bit better. Um, she is super dark on her tan too, which is too much. Okay. This tan is way too dark. Um, you can see it kind of splotching here a little bit, splotching here a little bit. When it starts sitting like that, it's sitting on top of the skin versus actually going in and seeping into the skin. So whatever she did with her tan, it was just too much. So come in this week with much less tan. Be all right right there. This this pose is pretty good. Um, just overall, her glutes are really good, that kind of thing. But I think the tan kind of mucks them up a little bit. So got to be careful with that. Um, next. We have Lisa, who Lisa just did win this Flex Pro Show. So we just did talk about her. So she is Olympia qualified. Um, where I think she can improve is in her posing. Um, her posing, her she has a tendency to do a figure arm. Here she's not fully set. When she does get fully set into her pose, we see a lot more pictures of her like this than we do with her arm down. So that tells me she's got a little bit of a, a figure arm going on right here. Her tan is nice. Um, makeup is not, I would definitely redo the makeup. Um, this just looks a little bit mucky, um, a little bit muddy, that kind of thing. Um, probably fix the hair color or I'm sorry, not hair color, hair part just a little bit. You know, even the hair color could use a little bit of oomph. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at that either. Um, overall, not a bad front look. This looks pretty good. Just got to fix that arm. No figure arms, guys, no figure arms. Um, from the back, Again, as I mentioned, she was the, sharp, the the softest one in this lineup, right? Um, there were a lot of girls in this lineup, like uh, Val, who were 
hard, had those, those hamstring tie-ins really pop in there. Um, she does not, you know, she's, she's got it there. It's there. She's got a, a tie-in, but it's soft, you know, and that's what they want to see. This is a pretty good pose right here. Now she could stand to fill out a little bit more in the upper glute, you know, upper inner glute here. She could add some more size. And again, she could add a little bit more, uh, size to her delts here, but I think this is more of a posing thing. I mentioned this on the wrap up, see how her, her, you know, shoulder blades are kind of poking out. She needs to get those to flatten out and that would open her, open her width up a little bit here and get those shoulders to pop a little bit for her. If she could do that, I think that would be a much more flattering look up top. Um, but I wouldn't try to go and reinvent the wheel here because she did just win this show. So she would be considered your front runner going into the show. And um, I would just try to refine the look a little bit, mostly with posing. Mostly with posing is where I would, I would focus my energy if I was her, um, just the presentation aspect of it overall makeup, all that. And last, I have Marissa up on here too. Marissa did make it into first call out at uh, Flex. She ended up in seventh. Um, <clears throat> this was a different look for Marissa all the way around. Um, her posing was different. Her suit was different. Her hair was different. All of it was different. Some of it I liked, some of it I didn't. Um, to me, and this could just be the lighting, but the makeup is really off to me right here. It looks really muddy. Um, I don't know if she did it herself or if she had somebody do it for her, but it's got this reddish tint to it. And again, that could be the lighting with the reddish tint, but to me, it looks very muddy. Um, I do like this suit color on her. Um, I think it actually is really pretty on her skin tone. Not a huge fan of this particular front pose. I think it's close. Um, I, I, I like this actually a little bit better than what she was doing before, because I feel like it gives her a little bit more shape through that waistline than what she had. But what I'd like to see is I'd like to see her take this hip bone right here where she's got her number and just push it a little bit more to the side. If she could do that, I think that would bring this length of her torso right here into a more of a V and would pop her glute up a little bit more here too. Now to me, she also looks like she's too hard. You see all this vascularity and, and graininess and through her waistline that probably knocked her down a couple of points, that kind of thing. But overall, I actually think I like this pose just with a couple little tweaks better than what she was doing in the past. Um, <clears throat> we'll see what she ends up doing this coming weekend. I know I saw a post where she said something about going back to her straight hair, that that's more her, her style, uh, which I understand that. Let me like take a look at one of her back poses here. I actually like the, the waves on her. I think it's pretty, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the straight that she had before either. I think that, I think she can do either. So if she feels better with the straight hair, go for it. You know, what I will say with this back pose, I think she's arched too much. Um, she needs to relax this arch just a little bit. Uh, and the suit cut needs to come down a little bit. Or, like I said, if she unarches a little, that may round her out a little bit more on top. I just feel like everything's kind of rounded and, and collapsed because she's arched so much. So I would just stand the, the upper body up a little taller. Um, and that would probably help her delts pop a little bit more too. It would make her waist sound look a little bit smaller. So really the only thing I would fix back here is I would under arch a little in comparison to this. This looks like it's just too arched because in general, I think that her conditioning from the back is pretty good. She has the tie in, but they're not like sharp tie ins. This is closer to the tie ins that Lisa has at this particular show who won the show. So um, I don't think she's super off with the conditioning from the back. I think it's just the pose itself. Um, I'll be curious to see if she sticks with this suit or if she goes back to the red that she's done before. I do like the suit color on her. I think it pops really nicely on her skin tone. So we'll see. We'll see what she decides to do. Um, so that is our European show right here in Spain. Okay. This is a very big show. They've got every, every division here. So that'll be a, a fun show to be paying attention to this weekend. Um, I'll be curious to see how, how it goes. And if the same girls come out on top or if somebody completely different gets up into that top, um, I think you're going to see it come down to probably the same handful of girls with the exception of maybe not Nora, depending on what Nora looks like. Nora may be up there she may not be. Um, so with that, let's take a look at our headlining show, which is Battle of the Bodies. So, oops, hit the wrong button. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So this is Battle of the Bodies. Now, I told you guys, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record here. I told you that as we got into these final um, these final shows of the qualifying year, they were going to get very, very difficult and deep, okay? 
Look at this lineup. This is a big lineup, you guys. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 girls, which is a big lineup. I know it's not 44, but it's still 28 is a big lineup. Um, and it's got some heavy hitters in here. You know, there's a lot of names on this list that I know I've seen competing throughout the year, but I, I, I don't really remember them doing much. Um, so any one of them could come out and kind of surprise us here. Uh, but there's a handful that I pulled out to be paying attention to and watching going into the show this week. Uh, first one on the list being Yulia. So we just talked about Yulia on our wrap up from this past week. Um, she is one of my girls that I work with on her presentation. This is one of my suits that I designed for her. Um, and she is coming in off of a sixth place finish at Sasquatch, which again is a huge, huge feat when you've got 44 girls on that stage. She did end up in that first call out. She did end up placing sixth. Um, there's not a whole lot that Yulia needs to change here. Honestly, uh, she's, she's tight. She's conditioned. This is in between. She's not fully set into this pose. Again, a lot of these pictures for this particular show, they didn't fully set into their pose when the, when the photo was set. Um, she may or may not be wearing a new, new suit this weekend. We'll make that game day call, uh, with that we'll, we'll see because this is a really good look and obviously they liked it on her. So, um, you know, bumped up the glam factor, bumped up the posing factor. Now she's just got to go out there and just freaking kill it again. Um, we do have a full back pose. So I mentioned this on the wrap up with the back pose. It's pretty good. She's a little tilted off to the side here. So she just needs to be careful of that. Make sure she gets even and gets even with the feet. Um, but in general, this is a really good back pose. She just needs to make sure we don't get that imbalance here. And like I said, the one critique I had for her during the show itself was to make sure she keeps her uh, keeps her glutes tilted up and back when she's doing her walk to the back. If she can keep them up, she's good to go. Other than that, I wouldn't change anything. So uh, fullness, conditioning, everything to me was right on. Um, I know coming into the show, she's a little bit tighter right now, so she's just got to fill back out. Uh, but I can definitely see her up in the top five of the show because, you know, like I said, Sasquatch, anybody in that top call out could have won the show. Um, next up we have Lauren Dannon Miller. So Lauren is an ex Olympian. Um, Tampa was her first show back on stage and she did not do well for her. She's typically in the top call out, right? So in Tampa, she was in second call out. She ended up in ninth place. Uh, I did talk to her at the show itself and I was there cause I was there and she asked me for my critiques and I was very honest. Um, I said, you just look like you weren't even there. You know, one of the things that, that Lauren has going for her is that she has a phenomenal stage presence. And typically when she's on stage, she's one of those people that you can't not look at. You know, when she won Border Clash, it was just like she was just stunning when she was on stage. When she was in Tampa, it was like she was faking it. Um, it was very hesitant. It was very calculated. Uh, it just wasn't the typical stage presence that you see from her. And, you know, when talking to her, she mentioned that she felt like she just had the pressure just got to her. So I mentioned a few things to fix with her posing. Um, just a few of her transitions and things like that. She has a tendency to kick her pelvis forward when she turns, um, which makes her look really thin and, and drops her glutes, things like that. Um, I wanted to see her smile more in Tampa. She barely smiled, barely smiled. Um, and then back pose was really, really off. So let me get to a back pose. And I, you know, again, I told her all this, you know, these are just little things that when you're on stage, it makes a huge, huge difference. Right. So she was really squatting into her back pose, as you can see here. So she's squatting hard into those knees. Right. Um, and I mentioned to her, I said, I, I don't know if I've ever seen you do that before. And she even said, she even said, I don't know why I did that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I posed like that. She's squatting, she's arching, she's pinching all of that. So again, a lot of these things were, I think nerves and pressure that got to her, right? If she comes back and she chills out and just breathes and does her thing, she can absolutely get back up into that top five, top three, even potentially win this show. That is not out of the question for her. Uh, she's just got to get out of her own head. Sometimes us as competitors, we are our own worst enemy and we can't get out of our own head sometimes. So if she can do that, I can see her absolutely moving right back up. So be paying attention to her for sure. 
Um, <clears throat> I pulled up Jessica as well. Jessica has been getting those top fives like forever. She's been in the top five, right? It's very rare that she's outside the top call out. She was in the top call out here at Sasquatch, right? She was just uh, seventh. I think she took seventh. Um, overall, front pose is not bad at all. To me, her waistline looks a little washed out to me. Uh, this can happen sometimes if you're wearing like a waist trainer a lot, that kind of thing. It can make you atrophy a little bit through the, through the waistline. So to me, this just looks really washed out. Shape is nice. Um, I just like to see a little bit more definition through that waistline. Um, I've actually gotten that critique before myself. Uh, Sandy gave that to me years ago. Um, not, not recently. This was years ago, but I've been waist, wearing a waist trainer and she was like, you know, we don't need to see a six pack. She goes, but we need to see some kind of definition, some lines, that kind of thing. So um, that's what I like to see there in that front pose from Jessica. Other than that, like I've talked about before, I think she could stand to have a little bit more shoulders here. If she had some more shoulders, um, I think that would be helpful. Um, let's take a look at her back shot. So we do have a back shot. Now she has very long legs on her frame. As you can see, her legs are very long here. Um, I have the same issue. My legs are super long. But she has some good projection and depth on those glutes, right? She's got some good 3D projection on the glutes. Upper body of her pose looks great. Um, she fixed her hair as well. I mentioned her hair from Iron Games. Um, she needed to brush it and kind of blend it a little bit. This is much better here, um, putting the, the extensions in. Honestly, I, I probably would, I don't know. I don't know if I would change a whole lot here when it comes to the back pose. I think she's got good conditioning. I think she's got good pop, all of that kind of stuff. I think it's just a matter of getting into the right lineup where she's going to actually get up and over the top. She might want to, she might want to arch a little bit more just to get the, the projection to pop a little bit more. Um, she kind of reminds me, not, not reminds me of Malou because that, because nobody really reminds me of Malou. Her structure is completely different, but Malou's got that pop up on the top that Jessica doesn't have here. So I'd like to see, I don't know, maybe play with this pose a little bit and try to get that pop up. That might help. I, it might, I could be completely wrong too. I'd have to see it in order to say, yeah, this is, this is the right call for her or not. It's hard to manipulate when you've got those long legs. Trust me. I know from experience <laughs> when you've got long legs, it is difficult. It is difficult to get those glutes to pop against people who have longer hamstring tie-ins and all of that. So my hair is going funky. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see where she lands lands this week. But I know she's, you know, again, she's the top five person, top uh, call out person all the time. So hopefully she'll get up in there again. Um, now, the one everybody's been waiting to see is Daraja. OK, so the last time that Daraja was on stage was the Olympia. That's the last time that she's competed. A lot of us have been like, OK, when's she going to get on stage? We thought that she was going to get on stage in Tampa. Um, I'm just guessing that she probably had a few uh, setbacks with conditioning and things like that. She's one of these ones that has a tendency to take a while to be able to get into shape. When she hits her stride, she's, she's usually good. She gets better every show she goes to at that point, but it takes her a little bit sometimes. Um, so I think that's probably along the, along the lines of what happened and why she's starting her season now. You know, she did take fourth place at the Olympia. So what that means is she is not qualified right now. Um, she, if you're top three at the Olympia, you automatically qualify for the next year. So she is not qualified right now. She needs to win a show and she's only got a few weeks to do it. So, you know, I would like to say she's your front runner going into this, but I also know that Daraj's first show out of the gate every season tends to be her kind of warm up show. It's not exactly, no, she's not exactly on. If she's close and her shape is good and her presence is good, it's going to be hard to beat her it's going to be very hard to beat her if she's on. So I'm curious to see how this goes. I'm curious to see if she's on. I'm curious to see if she's still got a few more pounds to drop, those kinds of things. I think we're all waiting to see what she's going to look like because it's been almost a full year that she's been off stage. So she could have made some really significant improvements in this time frame. So this one's going to be a fun one to watch just simply for this factor alone. I'm not really going to go through her photos because this was the Olympia and this was December last year. So it's been almost a full year that we haven't, haven't seen her on stage, but this will be a fun one to watch right here. Um, <clears throat> and then the last one that I brought up was Nadai, Nadi, Nadai. I'm going to say Nadai. I, I'm sorry. I butcher names until you tell me what your name is. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Um, but she just did her pro debut recently. So where did she end up? 
let's look at this for a second. So at Clash, she was third. In Iron Games, she was sixth. I feel, for some reason, I'm thinking she did Sasquatch too, but I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just just thinking she did that. She didn't actually do it. Am I wrong? Maybe this, did they spell her name wrong? Maybe. Let's see. Let me see. I'm going to check this because those pictures would be better if, if she did do this. Uh, nope, I don't see her on here. So maybe I'm just making that up in my head. Never mind. Okay, so we'll just go with our Iron Games. So anyway, she came out of the gate swinging, right, with her pro debut um, in that top five position. Uh, these pictures are really difficult to see what we're doing here. So I don't want to say too much about her physique or anything like that, but she could definitely be a threat here. She's got a great shape. She just needs to kind of fix her posing a little bit. She comes a little too straight on with that front pose. Um, you know, again, these pictures are really dark, so I don't want to say much about her conditioning and stuff like that. Her conditioning could be totally fine here. She looks like she's a little soft. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think that's just the lighting itself on the photos. Um, <clears throat> Because when we turn her to the back, she's definitely not too soft. You can see that. So here she is from the back. What she really needs more than anything else is she just needs some more upper glute, upper outer glute in order to pop it up a little. She's a little leg heavy here. Um, and that's also the case when we look at her from the side. Like we saw her from the side in the clash. We saw some photos and things like that from the side. And she just doesn't have that top part of her glute. She just slopes down. So that upper outer glute is a big deal. If she can get that. Um, she could definitely win shows like really quickly. So with that still, I still think she's gonna be in the first call out just a matter of where she's going to land. Um, and if her conditioning's on and, and everybody's not, then that could push her over the edge. She could definitely be a threat here for the win. Um, so with that, that brings us to the close of our preview for this week. Um, when we're talking about battle of the bodies, You know, there's a bunch of other girls on this list that I didn't pull up that could be potential threats that have gotten top fives in the past, that kind of thing. And really the wild card here is Daraja. Uh, we all kind of assume she's going to come out with a bang, but she could be off. It's happened, you know, and if she's off, then it's anybody's game, right? If she's on, it's going to be really, really hard to beat her. So it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting show. Um, I think... They have a live stream, but this is the, if you ever want to look at the actual, um, show lists and things like that, just go to ipbpro.com and you go to the front page, all of the current, um, competitor lists and everything are right there. So are the, um, the banners for each show. So you can find all the information, like there's your website for this one. Um, you know, there's your info here. It doesn't have a website on here, but you could find it. Um, here's your website for Mexico. And here's your website for the Euro European Pro. I said Europa. It's European. No, it is Europa. Okay, never mind. It's Europa Championship Pro, NPC European. There we go. Got it. So you know, there's there. You can get all the information right there on um, ipbpro.com. So with that, type into the comments. Tell me who you've got for each show. Did I miss anybody? Did I leave somebody off that we should be paying attention to? Because if I did, I want to know because I want to be paying attention to them this weekend. Tell me, um, tell me your thoughts, who you think is going to be in the top five in each one of these positions. Okay. Um, and like I said, if you want to work with me, you can go to suitsimposing.com or seancouturecuties.com. Either one links are down here in the description box. Um, follow us on Instagram. Also get your cuties conquer on the stage ticket right here. We have early bird pricing right now that's closing soon. So once the early bird pricing goes away, then you have to pay full price. So if you want this at a discount, this is what this is for right here. And then you get to be with the top people in our sport, not just top Olympians, top coaches, people who can actually help you ascend to the next level. We have people coming that have never competed before. And we have people that are coming that are Olympians. Everybody gets something out of this, right? So um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be announcing our sponsors. If you're watching my Instagram, I'm, I'm kind of highlighting each one of our speakers, but you're going to see some of our sponsors come up too. So you're going to get an idea of companies that you're, you can get involved with um, that will be giving giveaways, sponsorships of their own to girls in the audience. Uh, all of the fun stuff, all the fun stuff. With that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Enjoy the weekend shows, and we'll be back to wrap them up live on Tuesday night. So Tuesday nights, 8.15 Eastern Standard Time, we always wrap up live. So come check it out.
All right. See you guys later.